The devil went to complain and said, you have put a hedge, a wall of surrounding around Job, therefore I cannot attack him. Say, I cannot be attacked. I cannot be attacked. Listen to me very carefully. Where we are going, only those without the hedge will be attacked. So when I ask you to repeat something, you have to say it with enthusiasm. Say, I cannot be attacked. I cannot be attacked. Because God, because God has put around me, has put around me a, hedge of a hedge of protection. Now, this protection is very powerful. Okay? And Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5 also took about it. It's a, it's a war of fire and the glory in the midst. This hedge is called a war of Fire and glory. Someone say fire and glory. Fire and glory. Say it louder. Fire and glory. Fire and glory. Hey, you didn't offend anyone. Say fire and glory. Fire and glory. Good. All right. So this wall can also be a wall of fire and glory. For example, when you, ah, oh, for instance, when you look at the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, huh? When they came out of Egypt in uh, 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 Exodus 12, they came out of Egypt and as you go for 40 years, there was a, in the daytime, there was a pillar of cloud. And in the nighttime, there was a, 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 a pillar of fire. Do you understand that? Amen. So the two pillars talk about fire and glory. The same pillar, when they, they were stuck on the Red Sea, Pharaoh was coming behind them. The pillar of fire went behind them. Do you see that? They were protected, they were surrounded. So we'll go deeper tonight. And uh, so who puts the hedge there? God. Who puts the protection there? God. God. So when God puts it there, no one can penetrate it. Amen. No one can overtake it. And no one can pull, pull it down. Okay. Now, the means of how God, what would attract God to put a wall around you and I? Number one, righteousness. Someone say righteousness. Righteousness. Uh, louder. Righteousness. Okay. Okay. That's number one. Number righteousness. With righteousness and a trust God to put a wall fire around us. So you and I, when we become born again and we're saved, washed by the blood of Jesus, the, the righteousness of Jesus is imputed to us. We are not righteous in our own effort. Or by our own power or will. We are made righteous by the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Say, I am righteous. righteous. Say, never, you are looking at a righteous one. Never, you are looking at a righteous one. Okay, so righteousness, say righteous. Righteous. Come, come on, say, don't condemn yourself. Don't, don't condemn yourself. Say, don't condemn yourself. Don't, don't condemn yourself. You are justified. You are justified. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, you are washed. You are washed. You are accepted. You are accepted in the righteousness of Christ. In the righteousness of Christ. Say I am righteous. I am righteous. So don't go around say, oh me, me, I'm broken. Oh, I'm a broken vessel. No, no. You go around say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Do you understand that? When your neighbor tries to condemn you, you look straight in the eyes and say, I am righteous. When they call you foolish names, you say, I am righteous. Christ has made you and I righteous. righteous. Amen. We are made in right standing with God. God. Because of that, God brings a hedge around you and I. Amen. So you have to know that you are righteous by the blood of Jesus. You have to know by the grace of God, you have been made righteous. Number two, mercy. Someone say mercy. 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 Say mercy. Mercy. Okay. By God's mercies. All right. It's by the mercies of God. By the mercies of God that Christ came to reveal mercy to us. By this message, we are accepted in God. Say amen. Amen. Number three, truth. Someone say truth. 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 Someone say truth. Truth. Okay. John chapter 6, 63. Your word is truth. So when we have John 6, 63. Your word is truth. All right. Is that true from 62, 63 there? You'll find it. Your, thy word is truth. Because Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and that whoever drinks my blood, you know, shall, shall never thirst again, who is on my body, shall not be hungry again. And the disciples left Jesus. 
And then he turned to these disciples and said, and, and you, where shall we go? They say, we are not going anywhere because you are, you have speak the words of truth. Do you understand that? So just in my word is truth. So truth, when you have the word of God, when you eat the word of God, that's why when you, I don't want people sitting in front, if you don't come with your Bible, don't sit in front. Because I can say, read, and then you're going to look in your hand, there's no Bible. People are led to carry Bibles. You have to carry your Bible and come in here. You are not coming to, even to a wedding, people carry, carry Bibles. Even to a funeral, people carry Bibles. When you are coming to meet the King of Glory, Jesus himself here in this revival presence, you need to come with your Bible. Stop leaving a Bible behind. Because the, word, the Bible is truth. Someone said truth. Truth. It is the truth. And then number four is what we call in the integrity. Someone say integrity. Integrity. Okay. Now, integrity. The word integrity, it is when it is this word and layman's term, it would mean the words you speak must agree with your heart. There are people who can say something with their mouth, but their heart is not in it. Someone can say, I love you. But their heart is not there. Do you understand that? So the word integrity is, is the agreement of the way to speak with your heart. Do you see that? So we are going to levels where when we say something, when no is no, yes is yes. There is no more sugar coating or a ruby lie there and put butter and peanut there. We no more of that. We, we want the hedge. We talk about the hedge here. Someone say hedge. Hedge. We need, whenever we say something, no more lies. Mm -hmm. No more blue lies or green lies or white lies. Mm -hmm. Or, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Because the, just a simple word, I'm practicing to say things without exaggerating. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a community where when we said something, we always exaggerated. Do you see that? When you saw a tomb, you say, oh, I saw a giant like Goliath. Always exaggerating. So, so to come out of that practice, it takes a lot of time in prayer also. So there are things that you can come to, even to the prophet. Some of you come to your prophets. You know, prof, this and I didn't have this, or I went there. You were just lying on the so you were just lying, 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 to make yourself look good. You have to come out of that practice. For the hate of God to remain there. Do you understand that? Amen. Okay. When you are late, you just say, I am late. Don't add things to it. For the sake of the hate that is around you. For the protecting wall around you. So, say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Today. Today. Tonight. Tonight. This time. This time. This season. This season. I come out. I come out. Of exaggeration. Of exaggeration. Many people do that, okay? Amen. Many people do that. Uh, you know, maybe those, of, those of you who are married, you say, Oh, honey, where are you? Oh, I'm at the feeling station. In the meantime, you are watching rugby somewhere. Amen. Do you see that? It's someone saying amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, protecting the hedge. Okay. Okay. Someone say holiness. Holiness. Okay. Holiness. Say morality. 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 Our morality. morals. Okay. Our morals have to be genuine. And then we uh someone say tithing. Tithing. Ah, when you talk about tithing, people look down all the time. <laughs> okay. Tithing. Someone say tithing. Tithing. And then some someone say giving. Giving. Okay, giving. And then someone say faith. Faith. Yeah. You must always have faith. You must always do not allow anything to move you. Mm -hmm. Always apply faith in everything you do. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Apply faith in your relationships, apply faith in your family, apply faith in your finances, apply faith in your business, apply faith in your prayer. Hey, whatever is not for of faith is sin. Because faith overcomes the world and its failing systems. Amen. It is our faith that overcomes. 
Do you understand that? It is our faith that overcomes. Now, uh, I was listening to the news. They say that meat is killing people. Hey, bring the meat to me. I'll pray for it. It will never kill me. Amen. Do you see that? Apply faith to everything. Do you understand that? Amen. Okay. Now, godly, godly communion. Godly communion. Godly communion. Communion with God. And that's daily. Okay? Godly communion with God daily. Uh, the, the next one, which is very important, be connected to a prophet. Say, connected to a prophet. Connected, ah, connected to a prophet. Connected to a prophet. Say again, be connected to a prophet. Be connected to a prophet. Say, never be connected to a prophet. Never be connected to a prophet. Not a pastor. Not a pastor. Not an evangelist. Not an evangelist. Not these others. Not us. Okay, how do I mean? The, 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 now listen, listen to me. Say again, be connected to a prophet. Be connected to a prophet. Again. Be connected to a prophet. Away. Away. <laughs> Say, be connected to a prophet. Be connected to a prophet. Write down. Second Chronicles 2020. Okay? What are you writing now? Second Chronicles 20 verse. 20. Do you see that scripture? Believe in God, you shall be established. Believe in the prophet, and you shall prosper. Ah, uh, who wants to prosper here? Who wants to prosper? Eh? You have to connect to a prophet. prophet. Listen to me. Well, the Bible does not lie. Does the Bible lie? No. So, this second chronicles, very powerful, this one, okay? Second chronicles must come right here, okay? Believe in God, you shall be established. Believe in the prophets, you shall prosper. Hear me say, break every. That's why people hate prophets. Because we prophets, we carry a... We carry God economy. That when we prophesy on those who believe it, it works for them. Yeah. When you do not believe in the prophetic words, you go around the circle as if you are a child of Israel who was going around the circle in the wilderness. Because they did not believe the prophet Moses. As well, God gave them 40 years to wander around. If you're wondering where your business will come from, if you're wondering where your finances will come from, if you're wondering where your success will come from, it is because you're not believing the prophet. You've got to believe the prophet so that, so that when, when, the, when you receive a prophetic word, because God speaks through the prophets. Mm -hmm. This is a generation where God is raising up prophets, the prophets that will speak words. And these words shall manifest just like that. Mm -hmm. Because God is on the move. Say, I am moving with God. I am moving with God. Second, I am moving with God. I am moving with God. Matthew 10, verse 41. Matthew 10, verse 41. The Bible says, Whomsoever receives a prophet, whomsoever receives a prophet, shall never lose the reward, but shall receive a prophet's reward. Whomsoever shall receive a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Matthew 10, verse 41. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So there are people who deliberately reject prophets. There are people who deliberately reject the prophetic words because they want to be, remain comfortable in unrighteousness mm -hmm. and in the work of a immorality and not working holy. Remember the first points that I gave to you? That when the people, they don't want this, they would rather reject the prophet and the prophetic. They would rather remain in their own kangaroo porch. You know a kangaroo porch? That's where a kangaroo takes a baby. Right there. Eh? 
There are people who are 40 years old, but they're still staying with their parents. <laughs> 40 years old, still staying in your parents' house. Hey, grow up! <laughs> grow up! And, I, you, your mother is you must, you, you must, your mother must kick you out tomorrow. <laughs> See, kangaroo posh. That's the kangaroo anointing. Every time, oh my mother, I ask my father, but how old are you? 35. 35, you ask your mother. You're supposed to be in your own place. <laughs> <coughs> living in the backyard. Oh, I'm living in the back. Oh, in the same house. <laughs> Kangaroo. <laughs> Say, not me. Not me. Say, not me. Not me. Okay, now let's go. What breaks the hedge? Okay? What breaks the hedge? What breaks the hedge? Number one, fear. Fear. Number one is? Fear. 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 Job, Job chapter 3, verse 25. The Bible says, the thing that I feared greatly has come upon me. We see in Job chapter 1 verse 10, God himself, God, put a hedge on Job. But Job destroyed the hedge. Okay? All right. Okay, here is Job. <laughs> the big smile. Do you see that? With a big smile. And then this job is actually protected by God. But, but then Job allows what? Fear. Fear in his heart. Because of that fear, because of that fear, there was an opening. Do you see that? Job 3 and 5. The thing, he said, the thing I feared has come upon me. That's what the Bible says. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So, fear attacks the mind. Someone say mind. Mind. Do you see that? So, fear attacks you in the mind. Fear is bondage. Fear is the opposite, opposite of faith. Where is your fear? Faith has run out. out. So when fear gripped Job's mind, he lost faith of the war of fire. And God was so confident in Job, said, ha, you can never touch Job. That was God. You can never touch Job. Go. The devil went, ha, oh, the devil went crying, see? <laughs> And God said, what are you crying about? You said I must go, but he's protected. He's protected. And then, then the devil went again. The devil went. And then he saw, oh, there's a small little hole. And then the devil sneaked in. Someone said sneaked in. Sneaked in. Because it's like a serpent. Mm -hmm. See, a snake. A snake who comes in. It can, it, it can walk along the wall. Do you see that? Sneaked in. Once he sneaked in, boom, touched him. First of all, touched the children, killed all the children. After killing the children, literally killed all the children with a storm. Next, killed all the, the, the goats. Next, killed all the sheep, killed all the cattle. But Job was still standing. Do you see that? And then lastly, touched his skin, but the devil could not touch his faith Amen. in God. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, it is important for you and I to get rid of fear. fear. What types of fear? Number one, fear. Fear of the future. Oh, what shall I eat tomorrow? Oh, what shall I dress tomorrow? Oh, how shall I go to work tomorrow? Fear of the future. 
Will I ever get married? Will I ever drive? Will I ever get a, 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 live in a big house? Fears, fears, fears. Fear will make you thin. Fear will do what? Make you thin. In your mindset. I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about in everything. It will eat you every, everything about you. The second type of fear, fear of mankind, fear of people. Oh me, I cannot pray in front of people. Ha! When I when I come to your house, I stand on the window. You are the loud speaker in your house. In front of your family. When it's come to pray here, say, ah, me, prof, prof, me, I can't pray in front of people. Me, ah, me. But in your house, in your house, you. Even the devil is afraid of you in your own house. <laughs> the third type of fear, fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Ah, I cannot fly. What if the airplane falls down? <laughs> oh, I can't go to, to, to that shop. What if they steal the money on the corner? Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. I cannot get married. What if I divorce? Fear of the unknown. I cannot live in America. What if they bomb there those <laughs> Fear to move to another country. Hey, me, I can say in any country. Oh, yes. But not in any country. I can <laughs> Definitely not in any country. I, can, I must make a choice, okay? Listen very carefully. All right. Choose carefully. Not a, because I don't want to say in any country because God can just send me to India. I don't want that. <laughs> All right. Fears, fears, different types of fears. Fear of bankruptcy, fear of poverty. People do not give because they are afraid of poverty. They think when they give, they will lose. They miss out, they, they don't know the secret of giving. It's when you give that God prospers you. Someone's poverty today, you that are listening right now, someone's poverty, it is because you rejected the prompting of Holy Spirit to give. Had you given, you couldn't have ended up in your poverty today. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Yes. Yes. Most poverty is self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. Most poverty that people end up in, it is self-inflicted. Are you with me? Proverbs 15, Proverbs 15, verse 19. I want to read this one. This is very powerful. Proverbs 15, verse 19. I want you to see something that uh, 15, verse 19, I read it here. The Bible says, are you with me? Okay. I won't say turn your Bibles because some of you left your Bibles. So I will read from my Bible. Proverbs 15 verse 19. 19. The way of the slothful or the lazy. Say lazy. Lazy. The way of the slothful man is an is an hedge of thorns. Hey. Say hey. Hey. Say hey. Hey. But the way of the righteous is made plain. The way of the source, you see people who gossip. They just go and sit on the neighbor's house and start to gossip. That's a hedge of thorns. Do you understand that? People who could know nothing to when they wake up in the morning, they target someone who is lazy to go and gossip with. <laughs> when, when it's lunch time, eh? When it's such time, they start yawning. Why? Because they never don't want to give them a cup of tea now. That's how to punish lazy people who come to your house, okay? Do you understand that? 
Because when time to eat, there's nothing to put on the table. Why? Because they were gossiping. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? So mm -hmm. they this was the built a, a hedge of thorns around them. But the way of the righteous, remember righteousness? Mm -hmm. eh? It's plain. No thorns. Say no thorns here around me. No thorns around me. me. How the edge can be broken? Remember, fear, the next one is what? Slothful. Slothful. Something like that. Lessness or talkative people who just do mind, mind the other people's business. Instead of minding how they can go forward. The, the next one is Ecclesiastes 10.8. I want to read this one from. Ecclesiastes is just after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. I want to show you something. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. This one also is self-breaking. Someone says self-breaking. 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 Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. Okay, can I read it? Can I read it? Are you ready? Are you ready to hear this one? Okay. He that digs a pit shall fall in it. And then we go. And whosoever breaks the hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Do you see that? Amen. How many people can dig a pit for me to fall in? Huh? Ha, ah, you know what? Prophets are made through hardship. That's why I don't recommend my children to be prophets. Because they cannot have faith that I have. Until God calls them. Prophets are made through hardship. Trials. See these gospels, they make prophets. They dig a pit for you, and then God said, don't drive today. Then they say, oh, they, after two hours, they say, they go and drive there to go and see if that prophet fall in. They themselves fall in it. Do you understand that? Now, look at this one, the last part. The last part, like the last part. Who, whosoever breaks the hedge, a serpent will bite him. Amen. Who breaks this hedge? Come on now. Who breaks this wall? Whosoever, you or anyone, mm -hmm. self, say self. Self. So we can break our own hedge. We can break our own hedge. If we avoid giving, tithing, huh? morality, holiness, integrity, mercy, righteousness, truth, faith, conversation with God, and not being connected to a prophet. These are things that we can say, no, I postpone to do this. Self. The Bible says, now what is a serpent? The devil is a serpent. You must know the word. The devil is a serpent. Oh, who likes to eat? Talk to me. Who likes to eat? The serpent. Uh, maybe serpent is uh, old fashioned for you. Let's talk about snake. <laughs> That's the English you can understand snake. Because <laughs> I'm talking about serpent, you are, you are lost now. Hmm? You are biting your teeth. What, what is serpent? What is serpent? <laughs> 